Good evening, folks. This is uh, Dr. Paul. Thank you very much for tuning to my channel today. And many people are asking me about herpes. And uh, I would like to talk about it. Remember, I only see patients in my clinic. Okay, some patients are calling and saying, please mail in a prescription. I don't do that, okay? You need to come and see me in my clinic. So let us see about herpes today. A lot of people are getting herpes infections in their mouth and gums and their pharynx and their genitalia. It's everywhere. So it's important uh, that you understand about this. Even sun exposure can provoke an attack. Now 25% of US population have herpes simplex type two. There is herpes simplex type one and type two. Both can cause herpes, okay? Usually type one affects mouth and type two affects genitalia, but that's not always the case. The infection is acquired by sexual contact. Even in monogamous heterosexual couples, if one partner gets herpes infection, the second one, the non-infected partner can get it in the next one year. And up to 75% of those infections are transmitted during periods of asymptomatic shedding. So don't think if somebody is not uh, uh, symptomatic, don't think they are not transmitting it. They may not have any symptoms and they could still be transmitting it to you. And sometimes they say, I'm burning. And then, you know, their lips are burning and they have a cycles, basically pearl shaped clusters. Whenever you see pearl shaped clusters, that is herpes until proven otherwise. And if they say they have it on the lips and our penis or in the vaginal area or perianal area and the buttocks, wherever it is, just to stay away from those lesions because you can easily get those, the, those uh, herpes virus into your body. And some people have a, a swollen lymph nodes and these lesions, they crust and heal in one week. Immunosuppressor patients have a higher risk. They may even have repeated severe attacks of herpes. Lesions of herpes simplex, you should always distinguish them from similar looking lesions like syphilis, chancroid, pyoderma, and a trauma. Test it. Direct fluorescence antibody can give you rapid diagnosis, viral culture, polymerase chain reaction. You can ask for a test, but usually herpes serology is not used in the diagnosis of an acute infection. Most of the time, I don't even worry about diagnosis. When I see these lesions and uh, there is a history and there is a reasonable, reasonable suspicion of herpes, I will just go ahead and treat it because testing is costly and also it takes a, a lot of time. Complications also, you need to remember, you see herpes sometimes can go into your brain causing encephalitis. It's called herpetic encephalitis. In wrestlers, uh, they can get herpes by contact. Sometimes it can affect the eyes. So you need to take this uh, seriously. And there are three medications I use, acyclovir, valacyclovir, famcyclovir. I usually go with acyclovir, but all three agents are effective and use them properly. They do not cause uh, serious side effects. Now only a cyclovir is available for intravenous administration and the immunocompetent with the exception of a severe orolabial herpes, only genital disease is treated. If you have a, a recurrent episode, if it is a mild recurrent episode, I don't even use any medication, but you can use a cyclovir 400 mg five times daily. If it is the first time, valus cyclovir 1000 mg, Varolic twice daily, famcyclovir 250 milligrams three times a day. And uh, usually I treat for seven to 10 days. But based on the severity, if it is too severe, I treat it for 10 days. Now, what about the recurrences? If it is a mild recurrence, I don't even treat it. And the pharmacotherapy is also actually not much beneficial in those cases. And the many studies are showing that. To be effective, the treatment must be initiated by the patient at the first sign of recurrence. 
So if the treatment is desired, then recurrent genital herpes outbreaks may be treated with three days of valacyclovir, 500 mg orally twice daily, or five days of acyclovir, 200 mg orally five times a day, or five days of famcyclovir, 125 mg orally twice day, to daily. Valacyclovir two grams twice daily for one day, or famcyclovir one gram once or twice in one day, are equally effective short course alternatives and can abort impending recurrences of both orolabial and genital herpes. So uh, if, if there is a lot of pain and tingling, then you can also use a little bit of corticosteroid cream. Many people get relief from pain with a little bit of steroid cream like hydrocortisone or tramcinolone. And if they have a severe recurrences, suppressive treatment is recommended because they will reduce outbreaks by 85% viral shedding by 90% and that results in about 50% reduced risk of transmission. So uh, if you are having repeated attacks, just take a cyclovir 400 mg twice daily and uh, or valacyclovir 500 mg orally once daily or famcyclovir 250 mg orally twice daily, pretilevir 100 mg orally twice daily, uh, they have superior reduction. Uh, please, please give me five minutes, baby. Are you urgent? Uh, yeah, I'm hurting really bad, but I'm, I'm going to go get ready to go to the hospital. I'm coming, baby. Okay. So, uh, so these are the important points. Hi. Uh, you can also use your latex condoms uh, to prevent and uh, it's effective in reducing genital herpetic transmission and... Uh, uh, no single or combination intervention absolutely prevents transmission. And if you are going to beach, always use sunscreens because sun can provoke herpes. So use ample amount of uh, sunscreens. A preventive antiviral medication should be started uh, beginning 24 hours prior to ultraviolet light exposure, dental surgery or orolabial cosmetic surgeries. You can also use local measures, topical therapies. Even though they are limited efficacy, as I said, hydrocortisone or tramcinolone creams, they give a lot of relief when patients are having a severe pain. Now, what about uh, COVID pandemic? A lot of people are having uh, uh, issues with herpes. If you have uh, herpes lesions on your face or any part of your body, cover them because COVID virus can easily go into your body if you have open lesions. If you are on your face, always wear a face mask. And if you're going to beach, use sunscreen to protect yourself because sun can um, uh, aggravate herpes in your body. And herpetic lesions will put you at increased risk for COVID transmission. So these uh, things will prevent you. And if you are Putting away your face mask, always keep it in a safe place because if you have herpes on your face and somebody touches the face mask you just used, they will get herpes or even COVID. So if you touch that face mask, throw it away in a secure place or keep it in a bag or if you want to reuse your face mask, just keep it in your lap. So those are the things I wanted to share with you. Like remember, if you want to get treatment, please visit me in my clinic, Dr. Paul's Clinic, 1516 Martin Street, State College, Pennsylvania. Thank you so much. Have a nice day.